Hi everyone, this is Shashank Mishra and currently I am working as a data engineer 3 at Expedia and in next couple of minutes I will explain if I could restart my career as a data engineer then how would I go about it. So this video is especially for the aspiring data engineers and today I will give you a complete walkthrough about my college life, what kind of mistakes I made in my college life and what kind of challenges I faced while making this transition from software engineering to data engineering challenges while finding the resources, the roadmap and also what I could have done better to make my data engineering career. So if you are new to the channel then make sure to subscribe and press the notification icon and also like the video as well. If you have any question any query related to the data engineering feel free to put it in the comment section. So in 2022 if I could restart my career as a data engineer then definitely I would start it from my college life itself. So any of you who don't know about my college life, first I completed my bachelor's in computer science in 2014 and then after that I cracked NIMSET uh, with All India Rank 43 and got admitted into NIT Allahabad for the MCA program. So for me the challenge was like I was just coming from that government university where like just professors were not coming for the uh, classes and uh, that was the main challenge because I was not able to learn and also I was not self motivated to explore things right by my own that what is actually computer science and how can I make my career into it and there was no support system and there was no support from the college itself or you can say a good learning environment that was the first challenge so after my graduation you can say I was still zero in the computer science part so while this MCA program what happened I had to start everything from the zero be it the coding part be it the fundamentals of computer science I had to compete with the BTEC students as well. So that was the biggest challenge one more time. So what actually happened in my college life because I was coming from that kind of background. So I focused a lot on my college curriculum. I focused on the programming part. I focused on the fundamentals like the DBMS, the operating system, networking, these kind of subjects and was too much into the theoretical aspect. And that was the main drawback because as a student, my first priority should have been to focus more on the dev skills as well along with the fundamentals because that is something which is actually required in the industry without the dev skills and without exploring the new fields in the IT sectors, we cannot make uh, the good decision about our career. So there was so much of lack of awareness and lack of dev skills definitely and why lack of awareness because I was not exploring the things which are actually needed in the industry. I was not exploring the recent trends in the IT like the DevOps, the big data, the cyber security, Android, iOS. I was thinking web development is the future and the backend frontend development this is the only option left for me. And honestly speaking, during my college part, what happened, I was just uh, copying the projects from the uh, GitHub's or uh, just referring the projects of my seniors and why I was doing it because I had to get the good grades and which was definitely the bad idea because the dev skills is something which you learn by your own. You cannot learn it by copying the things from somewhere else. So three key takeaways from my college life. First. I was stick to the college curriculum only. Second, I didn't acquire relevant dev skills. Third, I was only focused on software engineering and I didn't explore new domains in the IT sector. So if you are also a college student, then make sure you are not repeating these kind of mistakes. So finally in 2017, my campus placement started and after getting multiple rejections from big tech firms like Amazon, Paytm, Adobe, Zap Labs, Finally, I was able to get a job offer from a service based company, which is Opera Solution and 2017 was the time when I started my career as a software engineer and that phase honestly was way too challenging for me because as I said in the college, I didn't focus on my dev skill. I just uh, focused on the college curriculum. So even I started my career as a software engineer, but I didn't know what exactly backend development is and the front-end development how to even code it properly so that starting six eight month was very very challenging for me and that time I realized that 
I am looking for something else. Software engineering is not a profile uh, which is best suited for me. And the good thing with my first organization was that that was a service based company. So they were working for multiple clients and there were different different segments as well. Few products they were trying to deliver specifically for the software engineering. There were few teams which were working on the big data domain. And one good quality about me is that I love interacting with new people and same thing I followed in my first organization as well. So during the lunch times or during any event, I interacted with those people who were actually working on different projects and different domain. So that was the first time when I was introduced to the big data and prior to that I had no knowledge about it. And as I said, even in my college time, I didn't explore these job profiles or any new trends which is going in the IT industry. And one important advice for everyone. Nowadays, your networking is your strength because IT domains are quite wide and you need to connect with different different people who are working in different domain. And that's how you will be able to get the idea about what is going on in the industry. And sometimes those things can be very, very fascinating and you would also like to explore it. And that's exactly happened with me. So based on my interest, although I started with the data engineering profile, but the main challenge was to find the CRISP roadmap. Because back in 2017, there was no resource as such available for the data engineering, be it any particular course or the YouTube video, any blog or any website. There was nothing as such available and I was struggling a lot to find the key skills which are related to data engineering, what all things I need to focus on and what is the exact path which can enhance my skill set specifically for the data engineering. So this is the thing I would like to advise everyone and especially aspiring data engineers whenever you are starting your career with the data engineering. So first you need to prepare a very, very crisp roadmap. Try to list down all those things which you need to cover in this data engineering field in the sequence wise starting from the programming then the uh, big data related fundamentals and whatever is needed to advance your career in the data engineering. Try to create that crisp roadmap so that you can follow it sequentially and you are not wasting your time into the unnecessary stuffs. So in my college time, I was not that good with programming. So starting one, one and a half year, I focused too much onto the programming. I was following few pro coders uh, in my college who were too much into the competitive programming. I was also trying to follow their path and that's why I was too much into the coding. And even after completing my college, starting six, eight months, I was into my college zone and again, unnecessarily just leaving my office work and focusing on to the coding challenges like the code chef hacker rank and just trying to solve those problems. Although the idea should have been like, I should have focused more on my projects or whatever tasks were assigned to me or even to explore the skills related to the data engineering. But still, I was too much, too much into the programming, which was definitely a big mistake because there is one important thing which I would like to highlight in the data engineering domain. You are not supposed to be a pro coder pro coder as in like you don't need to invest your too much of time into the competitive programming and all. Even if you are good with your DSA fundamentals and if you are able to solve the problem that to till the medium level, that is completely fine and you will be definitely able to crack the good of the good companies. So instead of focusing too much onto the programming part, ideally I should have focused on my data engineering skill sets, which are very, very important and highly demanded in the companies. So those skill sets are like Hadoop, Apache Spark, Apache Hive, Flink, Kafka, transactional databases, NoSQL databases, and a very, very good hands-on on the SQL part. So these are the important skill sets which I should have focused when I started my career as a data engineer. But definitely that was a mistake and I learned from it. And the time I realized it, I instantly started exploring these important skill sets and got a good grip on it. And that's how I was even able to enhance my data engineering skills. So before 2020, I was not able to crack any of the man company, especially Amazon, because that was my favorite company. And also I was 
rejected by Amazon twice, first in 2017, second in 2019. But finally, I made into Amazon in 2020. But what actually went wrong before 2020? So the main reason for that lack of good projects on my portfolio and why that was happening because in the starting of my career, the 2017 to 2020, I was very much uh, focused on the theoretical aspects of big data engineering skill sets. Like I talked about Spark, Hadoop, Hive. What I did, I was exploring these skill sets and that too from the theoretical aspect. Let's say how Spark architecture work and how we can actually code in the Spark. I was not trying to understand the crux of these frameworks and especially what I should say, I was not focusing on learning by doing. So ideally when I started learning these skill sets important which are related to the data engineering. So that was the reason I was failing in the interviews before 2020. Although I was able to crack initial technical rounds like the coding round and the SQL round, but I was not able to crack design or project related discussion because I had nothing to show on my resume or you can say the portfolio, nothing to show as in like the challenging projects or something which is very, very relevant to the data engineering. I didn't have those kind of things on my resume and that is why I was not able to create that kind of impact in my interviews. So ideally what should I have done as soon as I started learning these data engineering skill set, I should have created good projects around that one. Doesn't matter a full fledged production level application, but at least something which I can use and I can play around it that how Spark actually works, what are the optimization techniques and how can even create a like end to end working data pipeline using different components of the data engineering. So now you might be thinking what kind of projects you need to work on. So I would like to recommend one thing to all the aspiring data engineers. So whenever you start working on your data engineering skill sets, try to make projects around batch data pipelines and real time data pipelines. And my special recommendation will be real time data pipelines because those are challenging to create as well and full of learnings. And most important part in the interviews, at least based on my latest experience in the design rounds, interviewers will mostly focus on the real time related design question. So if you are working on these kind of projects, that would be really helpful. So now let's talk about something which is very, very important, which I could have focused on if I need to restart my career as a data engineer. So before 2020, I didn't focus much on the cloud part. Although it was in the market, everybody was talking about it. Companies were moving from on-premises to cloud part, but still I was the one who was not aware about it. Or you can say I was not motivated enough to explore this cloud part. So before 2020, like uh, till I joined the Amazon, I didn't work practically on the cloud part and I definitely uh, regret about it because this cloud part is something which has become a very, very important skill set for a data engineer. If you are targeting good product based companies. So if you are good at any cloud platform, it can be AWS, it can be Azure, it can be the GCP. So if you are good at it, then definitely you will stand out from the crowd and you will get a great, great advantage in the interview shortlisting and during your interviews as well. So if I could restart my career as a data engineer, then cloud is something which I would like to pick as soon as possible. And also I would like to clarify one doubt which I keep on getting from the audience. Let's say if I know one specific cloud platform, for example, AWS and other company in their job description, they have mentioned about Azure or GCP. So whether they will shortlist my profile or they will hire me or not. So answer is yes, because companies are not specifically looking for any specific cloud platform. If you know about it, that's good to have. But what they are looking for, whether you are expert of the cloud or not, because every cloud platform has created different, different kind of services, few common services as well, but their implementation on their platform is different. So, and you can learn it very, very easily. That's why you don't need to care about it. If you know AWS, then you cannot crack the interviews of those company which are requiring the Azure part. So the combination of technical skills plus soft skills is something which will make you a good engineer. 
because companies are not looking for a pro coder or an engineer only. They are looking for someone who can lead the projects and you need to build those kind of leadership qualities and that's how the soft skill is something which will play a very very important role and I will tell you why when you will work on a project in a particular company so that is something which will require the involvement with the clients and you need to communicate all the things to your clients you need to get the requirements as well you need to talk to your leadership you need to talk to your stakeholders and soft skill is not always about the verbal communication it is about how you write your emails how you communicate the information how you document the thing so everything is very very much important when you will be working in good companies they have a very very managed process and you need to take that responsibility so that you can drive the project till the end and the soft skill part is something which you need to work on because there is no one who can teach you all these things together and you need to focus on your personality development and I will explain that how I worked on my communication skills and how I improved my soft skills. So in my first company that was actually a service based company and I found a very very great advantage of working in service based companies. Why? Because you will get a chance to interact with multiple clients sometimes client related to the healthcare sometimes client related to the fintech sometimes client related to the pharmaceutical industries so when you interact with your clients you actually get to know their aspects of business you try to improve your communication you try to listen them right how they are speaking how they are communicating and that's how you will try to learn that part as well initially that was very challenging for me because in my college i was not good at uh, the speaking in English and even writing the things properly in the English with proper grammar and all and that was the reason I was very very hesitant in the beginning to take participation in the meetings or you can say in the uh, client meetings or leadership meetings and you need to get that kind of courage you need to get that kind of confidence in the beginning you will feel ashamed uh, in the public while speaking but that is completely fine you need to ignore it you need to improve yourself so just feel that much motivated so that you can face that amount of public and you can improve your soft skill so that's how even i improved it more participation more learnings so these were the mistakes and challenges which i faced in my college life and in my professional journey i wish i could go back in time and fix it but unfortunately i can't so i hope you guys won't make these kind of mistakes which i did and that's why we created this video for all the aspiring data engineers and if you find it informative make sure to like the video and if you are new to our channel then hit the subscribe button and press the notification icon and if you have any query and any question related to data engineering feel free to put it in the comment section we will take it up in the next video.